So we are going to talk about line integrals in a vector field. And here on the board, I've written a statement about what the vector field line integral is trying to do. Our goal is to measure the component of some vector field f parallel to the path of our curve c across the entire length of the curve. In order to understand how we can do that, we need to start by thinking about how we can measure the component of f parallel to c at a single point. So let's say this is our curve C. And we want to measure the component of a vector field parallel to the path of C at this point. The first thing we need to do is think about how we can represent the idea of the path of C. And in order to do that, we can use the derivative. More specifically, at some point along this curve C, we can represent the unit tangent vector, which is a vector of magnitude 1 that points in the direction that the curve C is moving. I have a video on the unit tangent vector separately. You can check the link in the description for that. From here, the other relevant vector is the vector field evaluated at that point. So the vector field is going to associate every point with a different vector. At this point, let's say that the vector field f gets evaluated to this red vector. If we want to measure the component of this vector f parallel to the unit tangent vector, we can use the dot product. In this case, if we take the vector field evaluated at this point dotted with the unit tangent vector, this is going to equal the magnitude of that vector field vector times the magnitude of the unit tangent vector times the cosine of the angle between them. In this case, the magnitude of the unit tangent vector is 1, so we don't have to worry about that. We're just going to get the magnitude of the vector times cosine theta. And this is going to give us a measure of how parallel that vector field vector is to the unit tangent vector. The other important thing to realize here is that f dot t is a numerical value. It's just a component of this vector in the parallel direction which means one thing that we can do with this value f dot t is look at it across the entire curve and take a graph. So let's say on the vertical axis here, we have f dot t at some point along the curve. And on the horizontal axis, we have the arc length s as we move along this curve. We can graph the function, the numerical value f dot t against the arc length s. And it might look something like this. So this function that we've graphed here, f dot t with respect to the arc length, is a visual representation of the parallel component of f along this path c for every point along the curve. And if we want to aggregate all of that information to look at the entire curve, what we can do is instead of just considering the height at a particular point on this graph, we can consider the area under the curve. And if we take the area along the entire curve C, say to this endpoint, that is what we call the vector field line integral. And in order to compute this, well, this is just a numerical value plotted against some variable s. So we can do it like we would any integral. We take the integral along this curve C of our function value f dot t with respect to the arc length. So we have f dot t ds. And this is one way to express the vector field line integral. Another common way that this expression is represented is by first grouping t ds, which we can do because the dot product is linear. From there, if we look at the idea of the unit tangent vector times ds, the unit tangent vector is a vector of magnitude 1. So its purpose is to describe the direction of the path of c, what direction the curve is moving at a particular point. And ds is the change in arc length. It represents how far we've moved along the curve. So this is telling us both the direction we're moving and how far we've moved. And therefore, if we can represent our curve c by some parametrization r of t, this part t ds is equal to the change in that vector r of t. This dr is talking about an infinitesimal movement along the curve. 
which is equal to multiplying the direction we're moving times how far we moved. So another way to represent this integral is f dot dr, where dr is a vector that represents a small movement along the curve. So now we need to turn these two expressions into something that we can actually compute to get a numerical result. In order to do that, let's start with this part of the curve, f dot dr. Again, suppose that we can represent our curve c by some parametrization r with respect to t. In that case, we can expand the idea of dr into something that we can compute. Because we know that dr is going to be equal to r prime of t times dt. This is talking about how much we move along the curve as we change t times the magnitude of that change in t. From here, all we need to do is figure out this f. Remember that f is being evaluated at a particular point on the curve, and every point is represented by r of t for some value of t. So in this case, all we need to do is say f of r of t. That's going to give us the output that we're looking for. And then we take the dot product with r prime of t for between our bounds t1 and t2. So this is a numerical expression for the vector field line integral that we can actually evaluate. The integral from t1 to t2 of our vector function f evaluated at r of t dotted with r prime of t times dt. So now that we have a way to numerically calculate this integral, we're going to go through an example. Find the integral over c of f dot dr, where c is the arc of a circle with radius 3 centered at the origin in the first quadrant, and f of xy equals negative xy comma x squared. The first step whenever we're doing a line integral problem is to figure out some parametrization of c so that we actually have things that we can plug in. It's talking, first of all, about the first quadrant. So we know that x and y are going to be positive. And it says the arc of a circle with radius 3. So we're looking at a circle that looks like this, centered at the origin. So this is the curve that we're trying to parametrize. And if we're looking at a circle, the easiest way to parametrize that is going to be some function r of t where we have cosine of t being the x value and sine of t being the y value. This is the representation of a unit circle, a circle of radius 1. So if we want a circle of radius 3, we're going to need to multiply each of these components by 3. So we have 3 cosine t, comma 3 sine t. Since we're looking at just the first quadrant, we want t between 0 and pi over 2. So now we have our value of r of t. The next thing we need to do to get our numerical result is figure out r prime. In that case, we can just differentiate what we have right here. So if we differentiate each component, the derivative of 3 cosine t is negative 3 sine t. And the derivative of 3 sine t is 3 cosine t. We actually have everything that we need at this point. We can just plug it in to the integral. We're going to have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of, first of all, we need to figure out f. Well, f is negative xy comma x squared. When we do this integral, instead of putting x and y, we put the x and y values of our function r of t. So in this case, we're going to have negative x is 3 cosine t and y is 3 sine t, comma, x squared. That's going to be 3 cosine t squared. That is our f. Now we're going to dot that with dr, which is r prime of t dt. This is a very long expression, so you can do the dot product beforehand if you want, but I'm just putting it in the integral in one big step. After this. All we need to do is actually compute this dot product. We know to do the dot product, we're going to multiply the x components and then plus multiply the y components. What you'll notice now is we have 27 cosine t in both of these terms. So we can factor that out. We'll get 27 cosine t times, on the inside, 
sine squared t for the first term plus cosine squared t for the second term. Well, sine squared t plus cosine squared t, that's just 1. So this factor is not important. We're just taking the integral of 27 cosine t dt. That means that we're going to get 27 sine t evaluated at pi over 2 and 0. The sine of pi over 2 is just 1, so we'll have 27. And the sine of 0 is 0, so we have minus 0, and that means our answer is 27. So that's how we do line integrals in a vector field. The integral over some curve c of f dot dr is a measure of the component of f that is parallel to the path of c, which we can represent by the unit tangent vector. If we take a graph of f dot t with respect to arc length and find the area, that is our vector field line integral, which we can turn into f of r of t dotted with r prime of t times dt.